Region 19 tournament time, game number three, Cumberland squaring off against Middlesex County College. It's the two seed squaring off against the six seed, and we have it live here this afternoon on BTV. I'm Tim Kettlefamo alongside Brian Goudsworth. The third game, now we transition from the women's games to the men's basketball games in the semifinals. Cumberland comes off of a very impressive win the other night against Brookdale in the quarterfinal round, whereas Middlesex comes in here with a win over Philadelphia. Both teams have split a game against each other earlier this year, but this should be one of the more interesting matchups tonight, Brian. Yeah, two very good teams, no question about it. And focusing on the Cumberland side, since you and I just got to see them earlier this week against Brookdale, it almost doesn't seem right that the region tournament is here at the Collins Arena and the Jersey Blues aren't here, but that's because of Cumberland. And you and I came away so impressed with the pair of Taylor Clark and Kevin Clark who did so much of the heavy lifting in that game and led the way for Cumberland to get the victory. Middlesex County, you look at their starting five there. That's the five players that they will start on the floor. As I mentioned, they're coming off of that win against Philadelphia a couple of nights ago in the quarterfinals. They won 94 to 79. And coming into tonight's matchup, have now won eight straight. Cumberland County on the other side, coached by first year head coach Darren Stalling. You see they're starting five on the floor and a player to keep an eye on this evening, Brian, is going to be number 23, Taylor Clark. He was extremely impressive in the last game, 31 points against Brookdale on Tuesday night. Yeah, we came away so impressed with not just him, but the guy who shares his last name, albeit a different spelling in Kevin Clark, but those two, did a tremendous job in beating Brookdale earlier this week and the reason that the Jersey Blues don't get a chance to play in the region tournament here at home. Opening tap is controlled by Middlesex and we are underway. Our officials this evening, Ed Gorski, Steve Taylor and Randy Desir. Coach Turco in his first season as well on the Middlesex County side told me pre-game he feels that he matches his team. He matches up well against Cumberland County, but they need to get off to a strong start and get the ball inside. Jumper goes up from Cameron Santiel, and he's not able to connect. So a blank possession for the Colts on their first time down the floor. Now Cumberland has an opportunity to take the opening lead. Kevin Clark, a long three, top of the key. That's no good. Latrell West dumped it inside to Elmer Rivera Rivera. And now the Colts will try to reset with the shot clock down the 15. Dar Darius Valencia now right in front of the Cumberland County bench. Long two inside by Deontay Crawford doesn't drop. And Taylor Clark bringing up the ball for Cumberland County going to the rim and he's fouled. Clark looking for an acrobatic finished that time as he was able to weave his way through traffic and immediately or very quickly into the game gets his first opportunity at the free throw line. So Kevin Clark now, or excuse me, Taylor Clark rather at the foul line for Cumberland County. First attempt from the line is no good. I mentioned that he had 31 points last Tuesday night against Brookdale in the quarterfinal round. Cumberland County Took down the Jersey Blues 80 to 74. One of the two for the line for Taylor Clark, and Cumberland has an early 1 0 lead. Cumberland in the yellow uniforms, Middlesex in the whites. Crawford inside. It was rejected by Andre Robinson, and Cumberland is able to clear it. Kevin Clark attacking to the rim, and a foul on the floor before the shot. That's now the second team foul on the Blue Colts. And the foul is charged to Elmer Rivera Rivera. It's an interesting name, isn't it? Cumberland will inbound with 23 to shoot. Dukes have an early 1-0 lead. Michael Burden now back to Taylor Clark. Shot clock down to seven. Kevin Clark, guarded by Latrell West. A long three there by Clark, doesn't drop. He tips it to himself. And now a whistle. I think
think the officials were just making sure that the shot clock reset. It's at 27, and Kevin Clark will inbound to Taylor Clark. Phil Cicero in the corner. Cicero feeds inside the Robinson, had it poked away and taken away by Deontay Crawford. Middlesex still trying to get on the board, down 1-0. West to Rivera. Turnaround jump shot doesn't go, he got his own rebound. So far, Cumberland doing a very nice job, not allowing any penetration by Middlesex in the paint. Valencia, now back to West. Santiel with the shot clock down to 10. Rivera, left elbow jumper, not even close. Rebound Cicero. Very good defensive possession from Cumberland. As you say, the ball just staying way out on the perimeter. There's just no entry into the paint. Here's a travel on Cumberland. Turnover there for the Dukes. It'll give the ball back to Middlesex. So resetting things for you, three minutes into the first half, here in the Region 19 tournament from the Collins Arena, game number three this evening between the second seed Middlesex County Colts and the sixth seed Cumberland County Dukes. Winner will play in the finals tomorrow. They yet to know who they will play. We'll find out later on tonight when Union County and Rowan College at Gloucester County square off. Bird now bringing up the ball. Cicero inside, some contact, foul before the shot. And this now is the third team foul on the Blue Colts. So fouls starting to become an issue as Middlesex has yet to get on the board. It's on, Rev excuse me, actually Valencia rather with the foul, that's his first. Both teams are applying very tight defense, not allowing any kind of dribble penetration into the paint. It's just settling for jumpers or turnovers. And as you mentioned, only one point on the board to this point. So Phil Cicero at the foul line, the 6'3 freshman from Millville, New Jersey. Very dangerous, had a career high 31 points earlier this year against Camden. One of the two from the line and Cumberland clinging to a two nothing lead. And Cicero had a big hand in the win against Brookdale here earlier in the week as well. He had 19 points, 16 rebounds, a double-double. Latrell West left all alone, and Middlesex finally gets on the board as they tie the game up at two. And a quick timeout is taken by David Turco for Middlesex. It'll be a 30-second timeout, so we'll keep it here on BTV. So you find that nice... Find from Crawford to West along the baseline. Coach Turco in his first season, highly successful high school basketball coach for more than 20 years, has coached at Carteret, South Brunswick, and St. Joe's in Metuchen, winning multiple championships and titles in the Greater Middlesex Conference, the GMC. And he has coached two players that are currently in the NBA, Carl Anthony Towns, who is at Minnesota, and Wade Baldwin IV, who has been bounced around to several teams but is looking to get back in the rotation, possibly with the Toronto Raptors. Robinson lost it, but Cicero is able to recover. Middlesex remaining in a 2-3 zone. Robinson, tough shot, left it short, rebound west. West now going coast to coast, but he's out of control. Kevin Clark, right at Crawford, throws it up there. The tip up goes in, though, from his teammate, Taylor Clark. And Cumberland goes back in front, 4-2. to two. So the two Clarks working in unison there on that possession for the Dukes. Crawford double teamed for a moment. Santiel with the drive, contact doesn't go. And the rebound pulled down by Burden. So far, Cumberland playing really stout defense. Taylor Clark, wing three. It's an air ball. Clark who can shoot it from that distance, but that one errant. Crawford in transition. Nothing falling on either side. 
In transition, Kevin Clark has it rejected, but he's fouled. Let's watch this again. Oh, clearly a foul there on Crawford. That's the first on Deontay Crawford, and now the fourth on Middlesex. We're not even five minutes into the game, and already the Blue Colts have find themselves in some foul trouble. Well, there's only been two more combined points than the number of fouls thus far. So Kevin Clark, the 5'11 sophomore from Miami, Florida. Too strong in the first attempt from the line. Mentioned how impressive the two Clarks, Taylor Clark and Kevin Clark, were the other night against Brookdale. Kevin Clark had 21 points and four steals. He's got very quick hands on D. Second attempt for Clark. He missed them both. And once again, as I mentioned a moment ago, Cumberland clinging to a two-point lead. These are two teams that ordinarily are very good on the offensive end, both average over 80 points a game, but this has been about as bad of a start as either of them could have expected. Rivera, the hook shot over Robinson inside, drops, and we're tied at four. Some full court press being shown by the Blue Colts. Cumberland is able to hand, handle it and get in, into their own territory on this side of the floor. Shot clock is down to 11. Robinson, burden for three from the corner. That's too strong. Ball is loose. Santil comes away with it. Middlesex looking for their first lead. Crawford, the layup inside the paint is good. A nice dish from Santil from way outside, way back behind the three-point line to find his teammate Crawford along the baseline. Robinson tries to answer back with a three, and Crawford corrals another rebound. Middlesex pushing the ball up the floor with West, and he's fouled before the shot. So the first foul now on Cumberland County. They will hit Andre Robinson with his first personal. Middlesex inbounds with 25 to shoot. West, the three, too strong. Rebound Robinson. That time, good ball movement by Middlesex. Found the open shooter in West, but thus far, both teams have struggled to make shots. And Taylor Clark was on the baseline. Good defense there by Rivera, playing him tightly. And it's another turnover. Amari Rex checks in for Cumberland as Andre Robinson goes to the bench. Middlesex, Middlesex still playing with their original five starters on the floor. Rivera, tough lob into him. He's able to corral it. Now he dumps it over to West, and West adjusts inside the paint, and Middlesex now pulls ahead by four. Yeah, Rivera was calling for that ball when it was on the perimeter because he felt like he was open, able to dish to West underneath the basket who got it to go. Amari Rex with the one-hand throwdown, and Cumberland pulls within two, eight to six. Oh my, that was a sledgehammer slam. Rex, who had just checked into the game, the 6'6 freshman from Egg Harbor. West hit underneath the backboard. It goes back to Cumberland. It's that one-hand throwdown by Amari Rex on the other end for Cumberland. That's how you make your presence felt. Just come into the game and rock the rim like that. Nice air, too. Middlesex leads by two. Burden. Now over to Taylor Clark. Cicero with five to shoot. Kevin Clark. From Iowa City, that one doesn't go. Offensive rebound, though, to Burton. He puts up a three. That rolls off the rim, no good. Rex, third chance opportunity, no. And Rivera finally brings it down for Middlesex. And now Rivera on the other end after the find from Santiel. And now Middlesex starting to get into a rhythm on offense. That's two nice finds so far from Santiel, who's 
exhibited good court vision. Twice he's found Rivera open under, underneath the basket to convert Middlesex baskets. Still 2-3 zone here for the Blue Colts. Cicero attacks it inside, halfway down, that time on the layup, and it pops out. Now Middlesex with some momentum. Santil from the corner. Rebound Clark. Kevin Clark right at Valencia. Tough shot. Santil and Clark fighting for the rebound. It'll be a jump ball. And it will remain here with Cumberland. Once again. Jump ball. Possession Cumberland. Dukes will have it with a fresh 30. Cicero at Santiel. Cross court pass to Taylor Clark. Pump fakes on the three. Now goes inside, tried to get a reverse layup to go down. That one doesn't fall. Now Rivera is fouled from behind by Kevin Clark. And this will be two shots upcoming for Elmer Rivera. Well, Clark did well to get back in transition and was not going to allow Rivera an easy basket as he just grabs him on his way up at the rim. He'll make him earn it at the free throw line. So Elmer Rivera, the 6'6 sophomore from Somerset, New Jersey, big target inside for Middlesex. One of the tallest players on the floor. Averages around 14 points a game. Player that's gotten a lot of looks as far as recruitment is concerned. He is a sophomore. Now some more full court pressure. Cumberland's able to handle it this time. Burden, shot clock now starting to wind down once again for the Dukes. Burden, left wing three. Front rim no good, Santiel bringing it up now for Middlesex. Valencia the two, it's good. It's a nice job by Valencia catching that pass, did not to take it to the rim, comfortable pulling up from that mid-range area. Foul on Santiel as Cicero ran right into him. Lucky, actually, for Cumberland, that was a foul on Middlesex because that ball would have gone out of bounds. As you take a look at this last bucket by Valencia in transition. Middlesex leads 13 to six. Cumberland started out the game strong but have gone cold as we're now halfway through the first half. Danny Williams has checked into the game now for the Dukes. He's got the ball now with the white headband. Taylor Clark with one on the shot clock. Had to put it up, and it doesn't fall. Now here come the Colts in transition with West to the rim. Tough shot off the glass, no good. Lately, though, Middlesex has done well to push the ball up the floor, and they've been able to make their opportunities, whether it's at the rim or from the outside. Danny Williams for three, this one's too strong. And Valencia comes in for the rebound. Santiel taking it at Cicero. Kevin Clark, can he handle this one from Cicero? He does. And the Dukes will try to reset, down by seven. Amari Rex, Williams from the foul line. A lot of shots have just not been even anywhere close for Cumberland. A lot of inerrant shots. It looks like they're not setting their feet. So far, the Clarks have yet to really get on track. And if you keep them quiet, there's not a lot of other players that average big point totals for the Dukes. And a foul inside going against Cumberland. I believe Amari Rex will pick up a personal. That'll be the fourth team foul on the Dukes and the first on Amari Rex. Crawford, quick two is good. And now 15 to six, Middlesex starting to slowly pull away. Well, Cumberland has to 
be better on the offensive end. I mean, this point total is just not going to be sufficient. They're just not shooting a good percentage at all. Cicero blew the layup at the rim, and now a foul to add insult to injury on Danny Williams. That's his first personal. Mentioned that Middlesex had won eight games straight coming into tonight's matchup. Ironically enough, the most recent loss that they have was against Cumberland back on January 26th, where they lost 88 to 81. Yeah, these two teams splitting their regular season head to head. Rivera can't hit the jumper. Crawford the rebound, spinning his way into the paint. Did everything but score, but it'll stay here with Middlesex. Middlesex has just been the aggressor. They're getting every loose ball. They're converting on the offensive end, and Cumberland has just been searching for answers. Santiel into Rivera. West, the baseline jumper. Halfway down, rebound Clark. Kevin Clark to the rim. Reverse acrobatic layup does not fall. And Cumberland struggles from around the perimeter. Continue as Rivera, his shot may have been partially blocked. I think Rivera wanted to throw that one down with one hand. Williams for three. Nothing falling for the Dukes. Rivera now keeping it himself to the rim. He can't score at the other end. Boy, and he may be down in some pain. Five on four opportunity now for Cumberland. Cicero, offensive foul. Yeah, Rivera's hobbling a little bit here on the other side for Middlesex, so we'll see if he's able to stay in this game, but clearly in some discomfort, and he's coming out. So Rivera checks out of the game. In for him, Alkeem Reigns, one of the many freshmen. Cicero, by the way, picked up his first personal foul. It's now the fifth on Cumberland. Santiel. Shot clock is down the 15. Under seven minutes to play here in the first half. Middlesex in command, leading 15 to six. A runner in the paint by Valencia is nowhere close. A lot of shots. In this game, Brian, on both sides, just have not even hit the rim when they've gone up. Yeah, especially on the Cumberland side, as they just try to get something going. You have to think one of the Clarks will be the guy to get things going for the Dukes, but they've been stuck on six points, it seems like, for close to five minutes now. Taylor Clark. Seems like the same story. Each time Cumberland down, comes down the floor, they get penetration, but they can't finish at the rim as West is fouled, and he'll go to the foul line for two shots. They just look a little bit lethargic to me. Like, they're not moving that well, getting back in transition. Offensively, they haven't been able to find the range. It's just been about as bad of an offensive performance. The only thing that saved them is, as you mentioned, Middlesex in their own right hasn't shot a good percentage at all. So Latrell West at the foul line, the 6'3 freshman from New Brunswick, New Jersey. Shooting 81% from the foul line, a very gifted player. He had 36 points when they played Brookdale here in this arena back on February 5th. And he also is inside the top 10 nationally for assists. Taylor Clark finally gets something to drop for Cumberland at the other end. And it's a 17 to eight lead for the Colts. West tries to answer with a three and he drains it. Yeah, and that's quickly answered. A good job by the Blue Colts finding one of their best players. Too much space there along the perimeter and West makes it count. Middlesex definitely in command and Cumberland did not get it across midcourt. A 10 second violation. Those are always kind of the plays that are inexcusable because Cumberland wasn't providing that heavy of a press there. They just took too much time getting it across the midcourt line in a costly turnover. 
A lot of turnovers here in this first half for the Dukes. And now Middlesex with an opportunity up by 12 to add to their lead. This is Reigns who's controlling it. Now to Santiel. Crawford traveled inside as he picked up his pivot foot. And Middlesex gives it right back to Cumberland. 5.33 remaining. Tim Califramo alongside Brian Goudsward, our entire BTV crew. Game number three of the Region 19 tournament tonight from the Robert J. Collins Arena on the campus of Brookdale Community College. Winner will play in the finals tomorrow. We have the women's matchup set as it will be Passaic squaring off against Brookdale on the women's side. The men's semifinals, though, are going to be decided within the next couple of hours as Phil Cicero will go to the foul line for two shots as the foul was on Alkeem Reigns. That's his first. Phil Cicero, one of those players that shoots 46% from three and has an average of shooting 57% from around the floor. He can't make the second foul shot, but his teammate Andre Robinson puts it in for two. Nice job by Robinson getting that rebound all in one motion, goes up and puts in the putback. 2-3 zone once again for the Dukes. Trying to clog up the middle, which is where Middlesex has their advantage with their size. Valencia for three. Santil the rebound, and he's fouled. Coach Darren Stalling in his first season as head coach for the Cumberland County Dukes told me before the game, if the team can defend well, they will be fine, meaning his team. There he is on the sidelines. Comes over from Stockton University where he was the lead recruiter and assistant women's basketball coach. He's been able to recruit very well at Cumberland County in his first season. And, and has several talented players on their floor. And to this point, he his team has defended well. I mean, he's held Middlesex to only 20 points so far on almost a half the basketball. The problem is offensively, Cumberland is just yet to get anything going. It's been a low scoring first half for both teams for sure, Brian. Cicero was losing his balance. He got it back, now throws it up there at the rim, not even close. Valencia now with the push up to West. West throws it down with one hand. Boy, that's one big dunk for each side so far in the first half as West at least came close to matching the efforts of Amari Rex that we saw earlier. Kevin Clark had it taken away, he got it back. Cicero underneath the bucket is fouled. Watch this again by West. It's a 22 to 11 lead for Middlesex. And once again, Phil Cicero at the foul line. Averages 17 points a game. 63% foul shooter on the year. Makes the first one, and Elmer Rivera, who was injured earlier in the first half, will check back in for Middlesex as Cameron St. Teal goes to the bench. Good to see Rivera able to check back in after, like you said, he looked like he was in some discomfort. Cicero, one of the two from the line. It's still a 10-point lead for the Colts. So Cumberland not doing themselves any favors from the foul line. Nice feed inside to Crawford, and he lays it in. Middlesex really does a nice job moving the basketball. That time, a little touch pass, finding Crawford, and that's his area down near the basket to make shots. Taylor Clark. With the drive, oh, Clark tried to throw it down with two hands. He couldn't quite get up there high enough. Was partially blocked, and they call an up and down. I'm not quite sure about that. It looked like Clark may have traveled, but they give the ball back to Middlesex anyway.
thinking about that now. Even if Clark had gone up and down, that would have been a travel anyway. So misspoke there, but a foul here on Middlesex. Sends the ball the other way. As this will, I believe, be a one and one, if I'm not mistaken, for the Dukes at the other end. Foul is on Rivera after he just checked into the game. That's his second. So Michael Burden now at the foul line, the 6'1 freshman from Bridgeton, New Jersey. A player that we haven't really talked too much about in the course of the games that we have seen recently with Cumberland, but he's in the starting rotation, and he's one of those players that is good at giving the ball off to some of the players on the side for Cumberland, such as Taylor Clark or Kevin Clark, really good at finding the open man and giving him the basketball. Yeah, and that's what you need when you have a couple of elite scorers in the Clarks is they can't always set up their own shot. You need someone to be able to find them on the perimeter, which Burden has the ability to do. Burden couldn't hit the one and one from the line. And Middlesex, as we approach, three minutes left here in the first half. Holds on to their 12-point lead. I have to imagine that Coach Turco is pretty happy with their effort in the first half, albeit a low-scoring effort on both sides. Shot clock now down to eight. Reigns to West. The long two. This one rolls off the rim. Rebound is fought for. Crawford controls it. Dumped it over to Reigns, who saves it out of bounds. Vincent Montgomery has checked into the game for the first time for Middlesex. He's downstairs in the white number 20. Reigns off the side of the backboard. Taylor Clark for three. Just has not been his night so far. West ahead of the defense. He will lay it in. Taylor Clark was trying to foul him from behind, but West is able to put it in for two anyway. I was just going to say as Clark just throws the ball away and Cumberland just continues to be out of sync. It has been a struggle. I mean, they're on pace for 24 points right now. Maybe a little bit more than that when you factor in that there's still two minutes to go in the first half, but on pace for 20-something points for a game, that's not going to cut it. could possibly be the lowest scoring first half that Cumberland has had all year. Reigns, now to West. Crawford, Valencia, the two. Rebound Montgomery, forces it up there over Burden and he doesn't get it to drop. Cumberland in transition with Cicero, he throws it up there. Cumberland wanted a foul called. They didn't get it. Now Cicero out and one. So finally, something falls for Cumberland. They get a foul to go their way. And now Phil Cicero will have an opportunity to add another one from the foul line. Yeah, Cumberland badly needed just something to feel good about themselves. If they can close out this half and cut the deficit inside of 10 points, I think you'd have to sign up for that if you're Cumberland right now, the way things have gone thus far. Foul was on Vincent Montgomery. That's his first personal for Middlesex. He goes back to the bench. In for him is Abdullah Niskins. And Cicero completes a three-point play. It's an 11-point game. As we're under 90 seconds left here in the first half. Crawford. Almost had it poked away. He got it back up in the air. Crawford is fouled. So Deontay Crawford now will take a trip to the foul line. The 6'6 freshman from South River. Shooting 70% on the year. First one is good. And he's been one of the better players on the Middlesex side here in the first half. One of their leading scorers, scoring a lot from inside the painted area close to the basket. There have not been a lot of jump shots made in this game from either side. One of the two from the line that time for Crawford. Remains a 12-point lead for Middlesex. Let's see if Cumberland can get something going as we're 
approaching the last minute of the first half. Dukes want to take some type of momentum in the locker room. Danny Williams in the corner. Shot clock is down to six. Down to five. Kevin Clark, long two. Front rim, no good. Long rebound to West. He lost it. And it'll stay here with Cumberland. Unfortunate for Cumberland, West is unable to grab hold of it. He tried to be kind of fancy there and grab it with one hand and didn't work out for him. Fresh shot clock for the Dukes. Taylor Clark throws it up there. It's an air ball. Rebound, though, is put back up and in by Kevin Clark. And it's a 10-point game. Minimal difference between the shot clock and the game clock. Neeskins gives it over to West. Shot clock is at 13. Game clock is at 14. Now the shot clock winding down here. Down to four to three. West on the drive. Left hand floater rolls in as time expires. Well, that's certainly one way to end the first half. Finger roll. 29-17, Middlesex leads by 12 at the end of one half of play. And got to be honest with you, Brian, this is a pretty slow-moving first half. Not really a whole lot of action. Both teams struggling mightily. I know Middlesex has had the better hand as far as offense is concerned, but... Both teams really struggling offensively. I think one of the lower scoring first halves that each team has had this season. But supposedly, things will turn around in the second half if the numbers tell us anything as far as the scoring is concerned. But you really have to credit Middlesex. They came out of the gate very early on. They started off strong. And Cumberland, it seems like, because Taylor Clark and Kevin Clark have been struggling, are looking to try to find some ways to get offense on the board. Yeah, they are, and I think that has to be the focus for them going into the locker room is finding a way to get those two on track. I mean, we saw what Taylor Clark was able to do in the game against Brookdale. He made a number of threes from way behind the line. So far in this game, though, at his sink, not just with his shooting, but when he's gone to the basket, he just hasn't seemed to find the right rhythm so far. And for Middlesex, I think they're moving the ball pretty well. They're doing a good job of scoring inside, but as you mentioned, neither team has shot it well from outside behind the arc. To try to get some adjustments going offensively to put a better brand of basketball out there for the second half. Coach Stalling definitely will have to make some adjustments in the locker room. His team is down by 12, 29 to 17. We'll take a break on BTV, come back for the second half of the Region 19 tournament after this. Back here in the Robert J. Collins Arena, getting ready to start the second half of action. Tim Califamo alongside Brian Gounsward here in the Region 19 tournament from the Collins Arena tonight. Cumberland finds themselves down by 12 to the Middlesex County Colts in the semifinals. As West along the baseline will stay here with Middlesex. The winner will play in the finals tomorrow. The opponent has not yet been decided. Still have one more game coming up later tonight against two of the more explosive teams, I would say, in the conference. Rowan College of Gloucester County, the number one seed, and Union, who has turned their season around, winning 14 of the last 17 games. That's coming up later on. We still have this game to decide as the shot clock is winding down here for Middlesex. Santil with one. It's off the front rim, no good. West and one, count it. Followed the shot inside and grabbed the rebound, and he'll go to the line for one more. West just fighting his way there between two yellow jerseys, determined to get that rebound. Not only does he get the rebound, he gets the tip in, and he's fouled.
Kevin Clark may have gotten away with extending the arm there. Here's Burden in the corner for three. And an offensive foul away from the ball on Cumberland. So we talked about at the end of the first half, Brian, how Cumberland was going to have to get back into the ball game and get back to basics. Kevin Clark has been extremely quiet. Taylor Clark has really been a non-factor. And even Phil Cicero has not had that many points to his credit. Aaron Stalling trying to get his team back on track. We're not used to seeing Cumberland struggle this much from around the perimeter. Middlesex has had their struggles, to be fair. They've only put up 32 points. But you would think that you would have had a better effort if you're Cumberland with so many explosive players on your side. And those three players that you mentioned are all were supposed to be leading the way offensively, but it just hasn't happened. And Robinson throws it away to nobody. He was looking for Williams. And those are the kind of plays that just show you how much you're struggling on the offensive end. First half stats, not really too many numbers that stand out other than Latrell West had 15. At the end of the first half, Aliyup to Rivera, can't tip it in. But the long rebound is corralled by Valencia. And now Crawford the jumper, Taylor Clark the rebound. Cumberland just needs something to go their way. Williams in transition, flipped it over to Cicero. Shot clock is now down to 18. Cicero inside, counter than one for Phil Cicero. Well, there they get something to go their way. And if there is a leading scorer for Cumberland, I would say it's been Phil Cicero, what he's been able to do getting to the basket. And here, trying to make good on a three-point play. Foul is on Rivera. That's his third personal. As Cicero will await his foul shot from the line as the officials are conferring. Rivera checks out of the game in for him, Cameron Santiel. 32-19, Middlesex in front. And Cicero, the 6'3 freshman, will try to get something positive going for the Dukes in a surprising low score game. I don't think anybody expected there to be only 32 points as the lead amount of scoring on either side as Taylor Clark drains a three from the top of the key. Much needed there for Cumberland. I think that's the first one he's been able to hit, so suddenly, a three-point play from Cicero and Clark buries a long ball. Maybe suddenly the Dukes have something going. Crawford up and over the backboard. So possibly a little bit of momentum shifting Cumberland's way as you look at a play from earlier in the first half. Cicero double-teamed. And the Taylor Clark, who we know can shoot it from behind the arc, but he's been very quiet with the exception of knocking down the most recent three. He wanted to shoot that one. Williams, it's a two if it goes, and it does for Danny Williams. Williams. Cumberland going on a little bit of a run here. They're within eight. And Darren Stallings claps his hands, sensing his team finally a little bit of momentum, perhaps the halftime break did them good. West the floater was an air ball, but the rebound is put up and in by Alkeem Reigns, and Coach Turco will call a timeout. It'll be a 30-second timeout, so we'll keep it here on BTV. Third game of our all-day coverage from the Collins Arena today. Started just after 12.30. Passaic game against Philadelphia was delayed after some of the traveling plans for the Passaic County Panthers on the women's side were jumbled up because of the recent snows overnight. Northern New Jersey got around five or six inches of snow and that backed the game up. 
But Passaic was able to get a victory in there. Brookdale won in their game against Sussex, so the women's finals are set. And for the most part, it looks like Middlesex has been in command. And from what we have seen, as far as who is the better team, they obviously have played better, but still a long way to go. Danny Williams, another long two. This one's back iron no good, and a rebound foul will send Cumberland going the other way. Over the back, I believe, on Amari Rex. It's the second foul on Rex. Amari Rex, he of the big throwdown in the first half. This after he came into the game, provided one of the few exclamation points that Cumberland has had. Santiel. Now to Crawford. Rolls off the rim. Clark. On the attack, a block is called. And Clark will shoot two shots from the line. He went over Santiel. Santiel looks like he may have gotten kicked in the stomach going down to the floor. Yeah, he went down kind of awkwardly there. You're not going to get the call for an offensive foul going down that way. So Kevin Clark has over 100 assists, uh, assists this season. Talked about his quick hands on defense. And the other interesting thing about Kevin Clark is he has scored double figures in all but two games that he has played this season for Cumberland. A very talented player for sure, trying to get the Dukes within eight if he can make this attempt from the line, and he does. Mark Baez Cologne will come in for the first time for Cumberland as Danny Williams goes to the bench. We did not see him on Tuesday night against Brookdale at all, Brian, but he's in the game right now. Neeskins double teamed and throws it away to Baez Cologne, who's fouled at the other end. Count the bucket. Wow, what a shot by. Baez Cologne as he's being held here. Look at that, he's got his arm pulled down and he's still able to finish and a chance to make it a three point play. And despite this being a low scoring affair, Cumberland don't look now is a made foul shot away from making this a five point game. Mark Baez Cologne, the 6'2 freshman from Vineland, New Jersey, hasn't played too much this year. Not able to hit the attempt from the line. Clark saves it, and he calls timeout right as his foot was along the baseline. So a smart play by Kevin Clark. And Darren Stalling now will try to draw something up out of this timeout with his team within striking distance, down by six. So you have to give credit to Cumberland, Brian. The last several minutes hasn't been pretty, but they're back in the ball game. Yeah, no doubt. And you have to credit the adjustments that were made at the half with Head coach Darren Stallings, as you see him huddled up with his team here, because coming out in the second half, the Dukes have really taken it to Middlesex. And for Middlesex, they weren't able to deliver the knockout punch early when they had a chance to. They could have been up by 20 plus points in that first half with how poorly Cumberland was shooting the basketball, but they allowed them to hang around. And now, who knows, this game could be getting closer. Cicero is fouled. Now the fifth on Cumberland or on Middlesex rather will be called on Akeem Reigns. That's his third. Clark short on the attempt from behind the arc. But on the baseline once again was Reigns, and he gives it back to Cumberland. What a play by Baez Cologne there. And he's been kind of an energizer bunny since coming into this game. Let's watch this savior tracking it along the baseline, and he throws it off a Middlesex player. Mention how Baez Cologne is not one of the more, is, is not a player that you see on the floor as often. Doesn't pull as many minutes, but he certainly made his mark in this semifinal game. 
Another offensive rebound. This time it's Kevin Clark on the attack. Can't get it to fall. That ball almost got stuck between the rim and the backboard. Crawford with good position. Now kicks it up to a wide open. Niskins for three. That's off the front rim, no good. Crawford is fouled. And we'll check the number. It's the third foul on Cumberland. It's on Mark Baez Colon. That is his first. Crawford at the line hits the attempt. He'll get one more. Has 30 blocks on the season. Is a player that has good size at 6'6 and is also athletic, can make plays on the offense. Middlesex now has extended their lead back out to eight. Taylor Clark to the rim. The one hand flush for Taylor Clark. Nobody on Middlesex even picked him up. Clark just a burst to the rim and was determined to throw that one down. If one thing's clear, we've seen a couple of highlight reel dunks in this game. It hasn't been pretty offense, but there have been some highlights to show for it. Valencia for two, knocks it down from the right wing. And Middlesex goes back ahead by eight. Kevin Clark, count the bucket for Kevin Clark. He'll get another one from the line. Explosive move from Kevin Clark as suddenly the offense is picking up on both sides. And for Cumberland, it's because the Clarks have started to get going. So you take a look at that one hand flushed by Taylor Clark a moment ago. The foul was on Abdullah Niskins. That's his first personal. And Kevin Clark will look to complete the three point play from the line. And he does. It's a five point game. Neeskins guarded closely by Burton. He goes right around Burton. Now Valencia again open for the jumper. This time he can't connect. But it's tipped in inerrantly, I believe, by one of the Cumberland players, if I'm not mistaken. That may have been Deontay Crawford as well. A lot of people touching that one inside, and it, it counts for Middlesex. They go back in front by seven. Burden for three. That's off front rim, no good. West tracks it down. Nobody back on defense. Crawford all alone will lay it in. Yeah, and you can't allow Crawford, who's one of the bigs on Middlesex, to leak out on the fast break catch that pass ahead of the floor and make the easy basket. Clark lost it, and it goes out of bounds back to the Blue Colts. Forty-two, thirty-three. Middlesex with the advantage. Here's Valencia, who's been hot from the right wing lately. Now West double teamed. Valencia, another long two, and he drains it again, right in the same spot. And that has been his spot, very comfortable right there. It's not from three-point range, but as you mentioned, that's at least three times here in the second half he's hit from that exact spot. Cicero can't get the bucket to drop in the paint, got his own rebound right at Montgomery. Baez Cologne forces it up there, and in, and the foul. How impressive has Mark Baez Cologne been since checking in for Cumberland? The foul is on Crawford, that's his second. It makes you wonder why he wasn't a part of the plan in the first half when Cumberland was struggling so mightily, but this has been a new half, and since he's come into the game, it's kind of represented somewhat of a turning point. Both, offense start, both offenses are starting to pick up just ever so slightly. Here in the second half, Baez Colon goes to the bench. I mean, after all, these are two teams that average over 80 points a game. What we saw in the first half was very much uncharacteristic. Cumberland has definitely tightened up their defense. They're playing much tighter than they did in the first half. West, a fadeaway is an air ball. 
And now Cumberland with some momentum. Kevin Clark is fouled along the perimeter, I believe by Valencia. And that's the second on Darius Valencia. And for Middlesex, now their eighth team foul. So while they have an eight-point lead, Brian, fouls are starting to add up quickly for the Blue Colts. Yeah, eight of them, as you mentioned, could be a situation where Cumberland becomes in the double bonus for a good part of this half and still plenty of time remaining, and they've been on the rise of late. Issues at the foul line, though, have hurt Cumberland in the past, and Kevin Clark cannot complete the three-point play. It remains an eight-point lead for Middlesex. Crawford is fouled. That's on Kevin Clark, and that's his second. Just been one of those games that has certainly not been as energetic as a lot of people were expecting. Nearly, not nearly the amount of scoring that a lot of fans and certainly teams that follow the Region 19 Conference would have expected in the semifinal round as Kevin Clark lays it in over Neeskins. Despite that, though, Cumberland has continued to play hard, and they are within six. Neeskins got it back after it was tipped up in the air by Williams. Shot clock down the five. Neeskins. Finds Valencia, shot clock at two, shot clock at one, Valencia at the horn, it doesn't go. Just smothering defense from Cumberland for that 30 second possession, that was a work of art. Clark tried to go off the glass in transition. Niskins with the rebound. Now to Crawford, inside to Montgomery, posting up, it rolls off the rim. How many shots inside as Middlesex missed in the second half? West is fouled inside and he'll go to the line. So Latrell West at the foul line. First attempt is good. Foul was on Clark, that was his third personal. Mentioned that West is top 10 in the nation in assists. Had over 100 coming into tonight's matchup. And every single game that Latrell West has played this season, he has scored double figures. That's a model of consistency. One of the two from the line for Latrell West. Middlesex in front by seven. Cicero to Robinson. He lost it, but it was last touch, the official say by Middlesex. Twenty-one to shoot. Clark nearly lost it, got it back. Middlesex remaining in a 2-3 zone. Shot clock down the five. Long three for Taylor Clark is not even close. It's just not really been his night, Brian. A stark contrast to what we saw on Tuesday night against Brookdale where he couldn't miss from behind the three-point line. Yeah, and he was making them from like that distance, sometimes even further than that. I mean, a couple of the shots he took, I couldn't believe how far they were, but when you shoot from that distance, you tend to have kind of streaky results, and that's what Clark has found. Rivera, hard dribble inside, tried to get the hook shot to go, and it falls in. Elmer Rivera gives Middlesex a nine-point lead. Nice little baby hook there in the lane, touches every part of the rim. 
and eventually drops through. Cicero now back to Robinson. Kevin Clark. I'll tell you what, Middlesex has done a very good job. They have not allowed any easy shots for Cumberland, but along the baseline and turning it over again is Kevin Clark. And there was a stretch there where it looked like Cumberland was starting to find their footing offensively, but that stretch seems to have passed them by now as they're missing shots, turning the ball over, and Middlesex is working the lead back up again. Valencia, it's a two if it goes, and he drains it once again from the right wing. He Darius is, Valencia. He has been on fire. That when his foot was on the line, otherwise it would have been a three-pointer, but somebody on Cumberland has got to get a hand in his face as he's making a living from that area on the floor. It's an 11-point game. Cicero had it stripped. And now Reigns will set the offense up for Middlesex. Certainly no hurry here if you're the Colts. West for three, open, and he takes it and he drains it. Yeah, and that's a couple of back-breaking shots here for Middlesex because once you get a lead like this for a team that's struggling all game long to make shots, it just makes it all the more insurmountable, it appears. Reigns over to Rivera. Robinson, who was guarding him, fell down. Rivera, though, can't finish, and now he picks up a foul as he bumps into Phil Cicero. And I think that was inadvertent contact there. That was quite a collision. Rivera, who got banged up earlier in the game, and this time comes away clear. That's the fourth foul on Rivera. The 19th foul on Middlesex. And now Cumberland, because it is the 19th foul on Middlesex, will be shooting a one and one at the other end. Phil Cicero at the line. Cumberland shoots 64% as a team. One and one, though, for Cicero doesn't fall. And now another foul on Robinson. Boy. I have a feeling we might be seeing a lot of free throws the rest of the way with the number of fouls that have been racked up. Well, both teams now running into some foul trouble as Andre Robinson now with his third. It's only the sixth team foul on Cumberland. They are one away from the bonus. Middlesex is one away from the double bonus. Niskins ahead of the defense, a total collapse there for Cumberland. And Abdullah Niskins gets on the board. Now 54 to 38. Colts in front. Long three for Taylor Clark. Is drained from the right wing. Yeah, he's going to have to catch fire if Cumberland has any hopes of making another rally here, trying to make this one more interesting. Reigns thought about a three, now we'll drive in on Clark. Crawford in the low block area, he traveled. And he had a wide open teammate there on the perimeter, opted to try to take it himself there. I don't think he liked the call on the travel. Danny Williams now checked back into the game for Cumberland. It's guarded by Reigns. Williams, a wild three. Didn't even set his feet, and you see the result. I'm not sure what that was about. Well, regardless of who wins tonight's game, Brian, I don't think either coach is going to go back and look at this tape and smile when they go and they look at their team's play. It has been an ugly affair for both teams that are considered some of the best teams in the conference as far as putting points on the board. I mean, the one saving grace is they can look at this game and say, well, at least we defended well, but offensively, it has not been a pretty picture. West with the shot clock at two, hoisted up a three. Now here's Taylor Clark to the rim, and he's fouled by Crawford. 
Another look. That's the third foul on Deontay Crawford. And now Middlesex is in the double bonus for the remainder of the game, so that could come back to bite the Colts later on if Cumberland could get closer. Taylor Clark at the line. We talked about his incredible range from way beyond the three-point line. 52% shooting from around the perimeter. That's what the stat book says when you look at Taylor Clark. Two for two from the line. Valencia on the drive, guarded very closely by Kevin Clark, and the rebound by Baez Cologne. Taylor Clark nearly lost it at midcourt. A lot of contact there, no foul. Taylor Clark lost it. Niskins at the rim. It was partially blocked by Burton, but Reigns got the rebound. And a timeout taken by Coach Turco as Middlesex is just going after every loose ball. It's a full timeout on the floor. We'll take a break. We'll come back to the Collins Arena with 6.02 to play after this. And we're back in the Robert J. Collins Arena. You are watching the Region 19 tournament from the Collins Arena on BTV tonight. And we remind you that we are sponsored in part by Joyce's Subs and Pizza. You can go online at joycessubsandpizza.com. Middlesex holds an 11-point lead. 54 to 43, they inbound it to West and he's fouled hard to the floor as he slammed into the post area right underneath the basket and he is still down. Well, I wouldn't be surprised if they called this a flagrant. He gets up under his own power. Big sigh of relief. Pass was a little bit late coming into West. He had to really stretch for it as Baez Cologne comes over and pats him on the back just to tell him, look, man, I didn't mean that personally. And I think this may be an intentional foul. We'll check. And it is a flagrant foul charged against Mark Baez Cologne, as West is still trying to compose himself. The freshman from New Brunswick. West's first attempt is good. Darren Stallings, though, visibly upset with the call there on the Cumberland sideline. Two for two from the line for West as he is still hunched over. He did pop up under his own power and certainly was okay. But a very hard slam into where that foam barrier is that protects some of the players underneath the basket just for those types of situations. Because it's a flagrant one foul, Middlesex gets the ball back now with a 13-point lead. Time is running out here for Cumberland. Both teams trying to keep their seasons alive. West this time after the feed from Crawford lays it in. And it's a 15 point advantage now for the Blue Colts. Just a great give and go that time with West cutting to the basket as he's moving a little bit gingerly after taking that spill, but able to make the basket. And Taylor Clark now this time is fouled. And because Middlesex is in the double bonus, it'll be two shots the rest of the way for Cumberland. That is on Deontay Crawford. It is his fourth. <laughs> Taylor Clark and Kevin Clark, the two Clarks on the floor, have been dubbed Thunder and Lightning by the Dukes athletic staff. And we saw Thunder and Lightning in the last game that Cumberland played against Brookdale in the quarterfinals, really haven't seen too much thunder in 
Not really a whole lot of lightning in this game. Just nothing as far as no. a spark is concerned. Both teams shooting very poorly. No thunder and lightning, just a few light showers. Jump ball is called. Possession arrow keeps it here with Middlesex. Jump ball. Possession, Middlesex. Mind you, coming up after this game is concluded, Union County squares off against Rowan College at Gloucester County. If that's what you're tuning into, we had a little bit of a delay to start the tournament, and therefore it is backed up. The four games that we have had here today, as Cicero is fouled at midcourt. And if this comes down to foul shooting, Brian, Middlesex has the advantage. They shoot 76% as a team. Lately, though, it's Cumberland that seems to be getting most of the attempts because Middlesex is maxed out with those 10 fouls. They have been getting those attempts, but the issue has been they've missed a lot of free throws in this game. They've left a lot of points on the table as there's another one. That one gets stuck. Santiel able to tip that one out. And that was actually a storyline in the last game that Cumberland played against Brookdale. Their team made their foul shots. They were 23 of 36 from the foul line. But late in the game, they left a lot of points on the table, which gave Brookdale ample opportunities to try to put some points on the board. They, didn't, they weren't able to do it, but it left that door open. And so we'll see if they're able to take advantage this time around. Neeskins. Now to West, guarded by Clark. A foul here clearly on Kevin Clark as West lost control of the basketball. And we'll check the number of fouls on Kevin Clark now. It's slowly been ticking in the upward direction. actually called the foul on Taylor Clark, so not on Kevin Clark. I thought Kevin Clark was the one that committed the personal, but instead the officials charged it to Taylor Clark. That's his first. Latrell West at the foul line where he has spent the majority of his night. He's had multiple attempts from the line. And now really this is the time in the game that if Cumberland is going to make a run at middle six, it has to happen now. Taylor Clark for three, that doesn't go. Baez Cologne though, the offensive rebound, that rolls off the rim. And in the backcourt, Santiel is tied up and another foul on the floor. I mean, we're just trading free throws each end of the floor. It's pretty much all we're seeing of late. So Santiel will go to the foul line, the 6'4 sophomore from Piscataway, New Jersey. He's actually friends with Makai Morgan, actually, believe it or not, one of the players on the Brookdale side who also hails from Piscataway the uh, town where Rutgers University is. Yep. <laughs> Scataway High School had a very successful year this year in high school football, went 13-0 and and won the very first bowl game at MetLife Stadium. Taylor, or excuse me, Kevin Clark rather for three. It's too strong. Jump ball is called. We'll stay here with Cumberland. Jump ball. 62 46. And if Middlesex can hold on here, it will be a huge accomplishment for. David Turco, first year head coach. Middlesex the last several years has struggled. This is one of the very first years in a long time that on the men's basketball side, the Colts 
have been one of the more dominant teams as another foul. But as you say, this is a performance that isn't going to inspire you if you're the Middlesex coach or anyone on the Middlesex team. They know that they're going to have to play a lot better should they win this game today and, and advance tomorrow to play either Rowan Gloucester or Union. It's going to take a higher level of play to come out with a win tomorrow. And it may seem obvious that the competition is going to get harder as you go along. That's an obvious statement, but I really do mean that because you look at the other two teams, Union and Rowan College at Gloucester County, playing some of the best basketball now inside the Region 19 Conference. One of those two opponents will square off against Middlesex if Middlesex, if Middlesex can hold on here. There's another foul in the backcourt. This one on Taylor Clark. That's his second. Both teams have now maxed out with team fouls. I mean, we've gotten basically no action because every possession is a foul. It's just one of those games. Abdullah Niskins now at the foul line. The 5'8 freshman from Milltown, New Jersey. Had 14 points against Camden on January 12th. That was a career high for Niskins. And has been seen a lot of playing time in the second half. Trying to lead his team in part to a victory. 6 Cicero the straight on three. Back iron, no good. Burden tracked it down for the rebound. Under four minutes to play. Another foul, and this one will go against Niskins. And this now is two shots upcoming for Taylor Clark at the foul line. So that's the second on Niskins. Clark's first attempt is no good. You can see the frustration on the face of Taylor Clark. He just knows for himself personally, for his team as a whole, it's just been a tough night. And once again, Cumberland struggles from the foul line. They have left a lot of points on the table. Both teams have been short shooting poorly, but in a game like this, you've got to make your foul shots, and it has just not been Cumberland's night. Reigns to Valencia, shot clock down to three, right elbow jumper, it's no good. Clark had it for a second, then lost it. Niskins on the floor, gets the timeout for Middlesex. Smart play to call a timeout. It'll be a full timeout on the floor. 3-16 to play. We'll come back for the third game and the conclusion on BTV after this. Let's go! Community College, the power to provide accessibility to over 60 degree and certification classes on campus and online. 316 to play here in the second half in game number three of the Region 19 tournament. Game number four is immediately following tonight's matchup between the Cumberland County Dukes and the Middlesex Blue Colts. Winner will play in the finals tomorrow at 2:30. But as Brian and I were talking about off camera during the break, there has just been no energy in the second half. It has been fouls galore. Both teams in the double bonus. A low scoring affair to begin with. And just an incredibly slow pace as we're, we have a delay to get the ball back in play here. It's just not been a very entertaining game, to say the least. And I think it's a surprise to a lot of people because we expected this to be really not 
so much about defense, but about offense, back and forth. And to be fair, Middlesex has made the best of an ugly game and has been able to score and put points on the board, but I don't think Coach Turco at the end of the day will be all that pleased with his team's performance heading into what arguably could be the championship game tomorrow if Middlesex is able to hold on. Long shot there at the end of the shot clock is no good. Taylor Clark, now over to Burden. Clark chucks up a three. Kevin Clark, the rebound, that doesn't even go underneath the basket. It's like the rim on both ends has got a lid on it that has not come off. If we could bring up a positive, so let's, let's try to do that. Darius Valencia for Middlesex, he's really played a strong game. He has, and he certainly played very well. He had 18 points earlier this year against Northampton, a player that is in the starting lineup. But usually when we talk about the offensive players for Middlesex, we talk about Latrell West, we talk about Deontay Crawford, and even Elmer Rivera. But you don't so much talk about Darius Valencia, but he has definitely performed very well in this game. Especially in that one part of the floor, he's made a living here in the second half. The right wing has been his area as Rivera from the foul line knocks down a jumper. But yes, a very impressive game. I agree, Brian, from Darius. Cicero. Burden, top of the key, three. Rebound Santiel. And it looks like, unless things take a very dramatic turn, that Middlesex will go on and play tomorrow in the finals. For Coach Stalling, it's going to be a tough way to end the year, a very impressive year, to say the least, in his first season as head coach. But unfortunately, the Dukes look like they're going to come up shy of getting to the championship game. They had some notable wins this year. They beat Middlesex. They also beat Northampton. And it was the first time ever in back-to-back -back seasons that the team had made the final four of the Region 19 Conference, but that's as far as they will go. They will not go to the championship game tomorrow. Latrell West will continue to pad his efforts at the line and overall in this game. He has played outstanding. He did come up shaken up earlier and the half, and he's not moving probably at his best. That bears watching for tomorrow because they can't have one of their best players not at 100% as they play for the region championship. West now will check out of the game probably for the last time as he joins Crawford, Santiel, and Rivera on the sidelines. I'll tell you, though, if anyone from the Brookdale men's team is watching this game, they're thinking, why couldn't Cumberland play like this earlier in the week? Otherwise, we'd have a spot here in this tournament. Certainly a very valid point. Cumberland took down Brookdale on Tuesday night, 80-74. to Into the game for the first time, Jay Rivas couldn't hit from in the paint. One minute, One minute left. Valencia tried to give it inside to Montgomery, not on the same page there, another turnover. Rowan College at Gloucester County and Union County are coming up next. Battle between the first and fourth seeds here in the tournament. Baez Cologne with a nice explosive move. He lays it in. He's been one of the bright spots for Cumberland. We really don't talk about him too much. He didn't play by my count at all on Tuesday night, but he came in tonight and put up some very good minutes. Yeah, and if he could have been on the floor more, perhaps the result could have been a little different for Cumberland. Valencia the long three. Shot clock is turned off. Rivas, he's fouled. Count the bucket for Jay Rivas, so he gets on the stat sheet for Cumberland. 6'3 freshman from Vineland, New Jersey, very close to where Cumberland County College is located in southern New Jersey. In the Egg Harbor 
region. You have Cumberland County just outside of Vineland. Then you have Rowan College at Gloucester County, not too far away in that area. Rebound by Sheck Nade, who was checked into the game for Middlesex, getting some minutes. In the last closing seconds of this game, well, it wasn't pretty, but Middlesex will survive. They take down Cumberland and will play for the championship game tomorrow. A very impressive win for the Colts. They take down Cumberland 69-51. to And for Cumberland, their season comes up one game shy of the championship game. For Middlesex, they will play for a championship title tomorrow against either Union County or Rowan College at Gloucester County. That game is coming up next on BTV in about a half hour or so. As we welcome you back inside of our broadcast booth, I'm Tim Kettlefemmel alongside Brian Gatz, where we've been with you since 12 o'clock this afternoon. And it certainly wasn't the game that we were expecting, but nonetheless, Middlesex pulls it out, and they will play for a championship game tomorrow. You have to feel for Cumberland, though. They had so much momentum taking down Brookdale the other night. They really thought they had something. Both teams arguably did not play their best game of the year. I think that's pretty clear. But they just couldn't make their shots. Primarily, Taylor Clark and Kevin Clark just didn't have a very good night. They didn't, and that kind of set the stage for what the game was going to be for Cumberland. I think we kind of knew that early. They were struggling offensively early. The point total was very low about halfway through even the first half. And as you say, you need your star players to come up big in games of this magnitude, and they did in the region quarterfinal against Brookdale, but tonight just not their night, never were able to get on track. And Middlesex, though, it, as you mentioned, it wasn't one of their better performances either, but still, though, they did enough. They kind of caught fire there with Valencia in the second half. He did enough making some shots, and they built up a lead, and, and now will play for the title tomorrow. But as we talked about, they're going to have to play a much better game tomorrow in order to claim the region title. I think it certainly will ha they'll certainly have to step up their performance because you have Rowan College of Gloucester County and Union County, two of the best teams right now in the Region 19 Conference. So whoever that they play, they definitely will have to step up their performance tomorrow. They will play for a championship title in the Region 19 Tournament tomorrow at 2.30. Well, the final game of our four-game set this afternoon into this evening here in the Collins Arena is coming up next. Rowan College at Gloucester County squaring off against Union County College. We'll have that game in a half hour. Stick around on BTV. And I'm joined here by Coach Turco, who just took the win. Um, how does it feel? Uh, it feels great. You know, my first season coaching these guys, you know, we're 26 of four, have an opportunity to play for the Region 19 Championship, so it's a pretty special season so far. And it seemed like it was a bit of a slow game. It wasn't something we were expecting. I know you guys go hard. What happened there? Um, I don't know. You know, maybe it was game 30 of the year. I thought both teams, you know, maybe we keep, both teams came in a little nervous being in this type of atmosphere. A lot of guys maybe the first time being this far in the playoffs. So, you know, we bought our defense the first half, which saved us. We knew Cumberland was a good team. They were going to make a solid run in the second half. And when they did, we were lucky to have a big enough lead that they never got it closer to five or six or so. So we took care of the first half that helped us save us in the second half. And are you guys sticking around to see who you're going to be facing tomorrow? Yes, of course. We're going to stick here. Like I said, it's a great atmosphere. The guys love being here. You're going to see a great game in the next game. So we just look forward to playing whoever we have tomorrow, and we'll see what happens. Perfect. Congratulations, Coach. And I'm Simi Kaur. That was Game 3. has been completed. We'll be back for Game 4. Stay tuned.